This is the House of Hockey podcast on the Hockey Podcast Network. Hockey is more than a game, it's a lifestyle. It's you, the diehard supportive fans, your favorite players who are on the team you cheer for and the organization who supports them. The companies that make your gear, bags, and beer league sweaters, the hockey moms and hockey dads, and everything else that makes this House of Hockey your home. Come on in, I'm Breezy. And I'm Ray Ray. And And this this is is our house. house. Welcome to the House of Hockey podcast, episode 118. I'm one of your hosts, Breezy. And I'm your other host, Ray Ray. And Mm. we are in the Stanley Cup final. Uh, Two games in so far from when we're recording this. So Mm -hmm. who knows how the rest of this week's going to play out when this episode actually uh, releases. Yeah, there'll be one game uh, played at home in Tampa in case you missed it and just just to give you a reference point of when we're recording this it's uh tampa is down zero to two in the series they just lost zero to seven in colorado uh the games head to tampa tampa wins at home we saw what they did in the eastern conference final when it was a game three back home in tampa they went on to win four in a row i don't think you can count tampa out right now i know everybody's like they're done it's over they're trash they're garbage i hate tampa it's done it's gonna be a sweep the labs are the greatest team ever but i don't think you can count them out i mean you can't count anybody out when it comes to the playoffs right um i think yes there are some um circumstances where i guess you can uh but when it comes to the stanley cup final i i think it would be not the right thing to do to count any team out sorry words are escaping me at this point but um god i don't know the game that colorado played in game two was an insane game like Mm -hmm. i was sitting there i was glued to the tv like i don't even think i like took my eyes off the entire (laughs) time like it was on Uh, if Tampa is going to come back, they're going to have to stop a pretty hefty team, which can be done. I mean, Tampa is, uh, resilient, right? Like they can come Mm -hmm. back. They can do what a lot of teams can't do. Um, I don't think anybody should count them out, but for, uh, for Colorado to come in and sweep, is it, uh, kind of iffy that they can do it? Maybe, I don't know, but they've been done it's been done before uh i'm i've been wrong this entire time so i it can happen or it cannot happen i don't know <laughs> oh, somebody's gonna win and somebody's gonna lose somebody's gonna I win think... somebody's gonna lose that's just how the game works i'm such an idiot <laughs> no i i no. all the points you said are great but i think what's a little concerning was i was reading what coach john cooper said about their performance in game two that like if they continue to play like this it's going to be a pretty short series which might be motivating to the boys but also like why are you saying that in a presser like I appreciate the honesty obviously yeah if you keep playing like this you're just gonna be a short series I mean but then he went on to say that you know he has faith in his locker room and his boys and you know all that kind of stuff so maybe a father's day at home with the fam can like, you know, spark some something in Tampa, but either way I'm wearing my big rig (laughs) Florida man, Tommy Bahama esque. What is this called? Hawaiian shirt. (laughs) What is this called that I'm wearing? (laughs) Uh, For some good luck for Tampa because I did pick them to win this series i am not giving up on them i'm not gonna stop cheering for them i'm i mean i'm not really cheering for them but like i just thought it was time to break out the florida woman shirt for today and also slightly obsessed with the new top gun maverick which we'll discuss later but they also wear a lot of these hawaiian shirts so i just felt it was really appropriate well to each their own there (laughs) 
<laughs> I see you're you're not wearing a Colorado Avalanche shirt. You are wearing all Kings all day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am wearing all Kings today. I, I woke up today and I was like, you know what? I'm just really tired. I don't even want to try today. I am I just put on the first shirt that I grabbed in my closet, which just so happened to be this one, uh, which is the uh, I showed you before the 1314 uh, Stanley Cup banner shirt. At least it's a Stanley Cup shirt, right? Like, mm-hmm. there we go. Yeah. I was also told that I don't wear enough King stuff in my life um, recently. What? And I was like confused by it. I was also told I wasn't a Brooks and Dunn fan, which I'm like, what? Who said that? I did. Why? I'm not going to put any names up. They were just, I, I don't know. I was just sitting there and I was like, well, okay. First of all, we were talking about if you like look at someone, could you like look at them and be like, oh, you, they look like they would listen to like X, Y, and Z, right? Or right. like this is like their favorite genre. I wear stereotype so- judgment. Right. Yeah, those right. things. Yeah. Yeah. Like what happens, right? And someone had told me something and they t- called me, well, they were like, you're probably like a closeted Shania Twain fan. And I was like, what are you even talking about? <laughs> Actually, she's not closeted. Just a few episodes ago, she was wearing was her Shania one. t-shirt yes. loudly and proudly. So I was. wrong. We had a moment off air where we just <laughs> fangirled. Um, so we were just going back and forth and it was just all these things. And then there, and I was like, that's funny that you guys would say like this, this, and this, but not Brooks and Dunn when I literally listen to them like three times a day. Like, like there's a song on like the playlist that we listen to. Yeah. We listen to a playlist every single day and like, it's always coming on. Right. And they're like, no, not really. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. Cause I have like five of their shirts that I often wear too. Like, this is just like <laughs> the weirdest thing. And then they said that they like someone else. I was like, so do you like this album or this song? And they're like, no, I've never heard of it. I was like, what are you even talking about? <laughs> anyway, it was that's just when a- I just say like, shut up. This conversation is over. That's those are conversations like, stop that you have when you're completely bored and then it's just absolute <laughs> nonsense and it makes no sense, but it's just, it's just what's happening. <laughs> right. Like yeah. when people are like, so tell me about what you do. I'm like, oh, I'm a host and I work with corporations all across the nation and I have a news background and I also have a hockey podcast. And they're like, you? I'm like, yeah, I know. Doesn't look like it, but yeah. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of fun to shock people anyway, instead of being like, I think super that's the best way to go about it though, right? Because then that makes you kind of like, interesting and like kind of like maybe relatable yeah and the way. most interesting woman in the world maybe i mean no one would look at me and think that i'm going to school for a to be a freaking nutrition coach like <laughs> you it's know the weirdest thing who we're knows break we're breaking barriers breezy yeah just look at us <laughs> look at us so any other thoughts on this series, uh, the Stanley Cup final series? I do think that Kale McCarr should win whatever the name of that trophy is for MVP. I, I can never remember the names of the trophies that go with the awards the at the end of the year. Trophy? Yeah, that yeah. one. Okay. He definitely should. Um, Kale McCarr is an absolute beast. Like, There's a reason why he has so much hype around his name and Mm -hmm. and why he was nominated for the Norris. Right. So, um, yeah, he, that guy insane. Uh, as far as the last final thoughts on this series, this is a crazy, I mean, we keep saying it's crazy. I I'm just, you know, repeating words at this point, but the watching these two teams play and Tampa has every right to be tired. I mean, they have played the most games, in the last however many seasons to get to this point and they have a right to be tired, but are they too tired to keep pushing for another cup? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, I think going back home will light a fire under their butts. Um, But gosh, the avalanche, I'm sorry. I know you don't like hearing it, but that team (laughs) is, they have, I, just from game two, like if you look back at game two, everything they did, you're like, why? It looked like they were playing against like an AHL team or something. Not not to yeah. say that AHL teams are bad, but it's like, what? Like 
they were just running circle or skating circles around the lightning. And it was, it was, I was mind blown. Yeah. The lightning were a little gassed. It looked like they just couldn't catch their breath and couldn't get momentum going. They couldn't like a couple of the goals that were scored earlier. Yeah. I don't really think you can blame Vasilevsky for, I think, I mean, they could like, they were good goal. Like they were very difficult, like good situ scenarios where he didn't really have a lot of support in front of the net. So I think it's kind of a combination. And I just hate when people are like, Oh, Vasilevsky sucks. He should just close his mitt. It's like, okay. You know, that's like, it's not always so black and white guys, but I think they can, uh, if they can really regroup and figure out and get some energy and sniff some of those smelling salts and like have a Mountain Dew or play some beach volleyball, a la Maverick, like go for it and like bring it to the ice. Yeah. And again, could it just be a bad night? I mean, that yeah. last night was a bad night. Like, let's just be oh, real. Yeah. Uh, bad performance or maybe not necessarily a bad performance just not their best performance not their best effort but also too just things just weren't going their way it was definitely going the abs way in many aspects because they were doing great um but i don't think that perf the performance it wasn't like they were just like bleh right mm -hmm. some may say that they were bleh if they were you know a little bit mad at them but they have some hope <laughs> yeah, some hope. Who did you end up picking in your betting game? Uh, so with okay, so with you, my honest opinion was I think the abs are gonna take it. Right. Uh, my nephew, he has been picking the abs since like the first round to like always kind of move on, not necessarily for the cup, but just like to move on. And we have a couple different things going and he ended up putting his bracket first. And I was like, well, it's competition. It's my nephew. We're, we're, we're interacting. We're having a good time. So I put, he originally put down that a West team was going to win. Okay. From the very beginning. And I was like, well, if you're going West, I'll go East just to make it, make it a right. fun little thing. So since I'm already down $14, <laughs> I was like, you know what? I might as well just double down. And I put yeah. Tampa on my bracket to go with the East. So I'm probably going to have to owe him like 50 bucks. But he did say he was going to take me to dinner. So because he felt bad for, for making me lose. But uh, such a guy. Got right? the Applebee's <laughs> on the date yeah. night. Got the Bourbon Street yeah. steak with the Oreo <laughs> shake. That's, that's all I thought when I heard you going to yeah. dinner. I don't know why. Okay, Cause well, that's like the only place you can spend $50 <laughs> these days to get dinner. <laughs> I know. Jesus. I know. Oh, that's um, a clip. We're going to send that to Walker Hayes. Just yeah. Let's do it. it. Okay. <laughs> Whatever his dance moves are. I have never studied them, but uh, yeah, that's, that's an interesting position you've put yourself in. So you're basically yeah. cheering for both teams is what I'm hearing. Uh, well, no, I, I want the abs. I want the abs to take it. All right. They, they Tampa's won it the last two times. I want the abs All to right. take it, but I'm just having fun with my nephew. Got uh, it. He's getting a kick out of it. It's just something fun we're doing. If I'm losing 50 bucks, uh, taking one for the team, it is what it is, but I think it's fun. I mean, that's, that's all about, you know, doing bracket. Obviously people want to win, but I think it's also fun to, uh, interact with friends and family when you're doing brackets and, and just see how it goes. I already know I'm doomed. So I might as well doom myself <laughs> even more. <laughs> well, I had my Freudian slip last week and I was like, I'm picking the abs. And then you were like the abs. So yeah. <laughs> obviously I, I, maybe that was like spirit coming through and telling me that that was what was going to happen. <laughs> so who knows? Who knows? But yeah. Who knows? Uh, at least I'm going to be happy either way what happens. Right. But I, I would be happier right. if the abs won, but I guess I'd be, my, my pocketbook would be a pocketbook. I'm acting like I'm freaking old, <laughs> would be happy, uh, happier if, uh, whatever. I would just win 20 bucks. Yeah. I want the, I want the abs to win. Screw it. 
Wow. Big statement. You big know, the first statement. time I heard the word pocketbook, I was like, is that, are, are you reading something? Like what's a pocketbook? I had never heard that before. And they were like, you know, your pocketbook. And I was like, I have I no, think- again, I don't know what you're saying. It's a yeah. purse. I've never even said the word pocketbook until just now. So I don't even know where that even came from. <laughs> Or, well, like it's a East Coast thing. They say your pocketbook, which is like your purse. But really, I think it means your wallet, right? I thought it was like a checkbook. Checkbook? A what? It means your purse. It means your purse, according to oh, Aunt Tony. Aunt Tony fact checked us right there. <laughs> yeah, she did. Thank God we have a producer of the show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's move on from pocketbooks and talk about coaching changes. This week's episode of the House of Hockey podcast is brought to you by Hockey Fans. The pursuit for the Stanley Cup is on, and DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL, has an unbelievable offer for the most exciting playoffs in sports. Oh, yeah. New customers can bet $5 on any team to win and get $100 in free bets no matter what, win or lose. Looking to turn a small bet into a big payday during playoffs? With DraftKings Same Game Parlays, you can do just that. Create your own parlay by combining multiple bets like which team will win, how many goals will be scored, and more. It's your shot at an even bigger payout. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. Best of all, you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code THPN. That's THPN for the Hockey Podcast Network. Bet $5 on any NHL team to win and get $100 in free bets no matter what. That's code THPN at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Okay. Whatever happens with the abs and the lightning, I don't care anymore because... John Tortorella is back behind the bench in the most perfect city for him ever. Why it has taken him this long to get to Philly, I have no clue, but it's where he should be. He's got a great team full of talent. He's got a former player in Cam Atkinson that he's already got a relationship. I love this man. I love this coach. I love his mindset. I'm just, he he was quoted talking about how, The biggest thing he's going to do is focus on teaching the boys how to play away from the puck. And what he means by that is what you and I talk about all the time, which is building that chemistry, that team mentality, that hardness, that determination, like really toughening them up mentally to play physically because he's not worried about physical play because that's the easy part. It's about getting them together. And I'm just like, so excited. I can't wait. I I need to go to Philly and see him coach. Like I just, I love this man and I'm so happy that he's back coaching. I don't know that a lot of the players will agree with that because a lot of them don't really understand him right away. But in so many interviews I've heard from players talk about him, they all have such respect for him despite him being a little bit eccentric uh but they've all taught him he's taught all of them something incredible and they've all said that along the way so i am very excited about this are you as excited as i am or no uh i am excited because i knew you were going to be excited and i'm always a firm supporter in what makes you excited (laughs) Uh, but I am excited. I think uh, he does good thing. It's good to see him behind the bench. And I think, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm excited to see uh, post-game interviews. Yes. And <laughs> those are, yeah. So I'm excited. I think he's just a good guy for the game. Uh, I'm curious to see how Philly will do next season mm-hmm. with him behind the bench. Um, I think that's what I'm most excited like you said, whatever happens with the abs and, and lightning, whatever. The most exciting part for me at this point is what's going to happen in the off season, getting into yeah. the new season. And this is what starts is coaching changes. And there's trade talks that are kind of chitter chattering. You and I have been going back and forth on some mm-hmm. unrelated things that are confirmed. So we're not going to bring them up here, but um, 
seeing him go to Phil, like it's a perfect, I think, yeah, we've talked about it before. Perfect match. Um, I'm excited. The city, I, the I'm people excited of Philly. You. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it makes you want to, yeah, it just makes you so excited for, for next season. So yeah. He, exciting. I, at first I was a little bit like, oh man, I'm so bummed. I'm not going to have his hot takes, you know, on uh, ESPN on Bucci's show. Cause he was up on the panel a lot during the regular season. And I loved just hearing his opinion on things that weren't involving his team because he could be more opinionated, which like shocking, like Tortorella more opinionated, but <laughs> I loved hearing him be way less filtered and really share his thoughts on the game and different aspects of it that when you're talking about your own team, you know, it's a different hat he has to put on when he does those pressers, but he still doesn't really hold back. And I just like, I, I just like, can't wait, like bring it on. And like, I can't wait to hear what he has to say about gritty. Like, I just hope they do something great with gritty and torts. Like I'm sure they will, unless yeah. torts is like, I'm not doing that stupid shit, you know, like, unless he's like got a really strong opinion about gritty, but either way they have to do something. What if they become best friends? I could see that. Yeah. I could see that. I could totally see that happening. So I'm very excited about this. I'm also sending thoughts and prayers to Cassidy, who Bruce Cassidy, who is now (laughs) to Vegas as their head coach. Nobody. He had quoted, uh, and I probably shouldn't quote this so I don't have it up in front of my face, but he wants to get the job done. Which is winning a Stanley Cup? Right. Is that what that means? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. (laughs) You're screwed, man. No, he has. He's got a talented team, right? So he should be able to, but will he have, I mean... I don't know. I, I don't know if I have the right words to, I need to, I need to figure out more work. I say, I don't know about too many times. Okay. Um, <clears throat> his team is so talented, but does he have what it takes to communicate to that team to get them to be the team that they were in their inaugural season when they were, I, is there too much team on the nights at this point? Is that, is that what I'm trying to get to? Sure. I think there's a lot of injury. I think the goalie situation, losing flurry, ownership, multiple coaches in a very short time frame, yeah. I don't think is been, has been beneficial not having like some consistent leadership. Right. I think I read that he signed a five-year contract. I'm like, yeah, that's not that doesn't mean anything in Vegas. Like they're going to boot him if it doesn't go well. And I just, I know this is how the game is when you want to make a change with player contracts. It's a lot harder to move people and and with no trade clauses, like you literally cannot. And therefore the coach is the only one to go, but I just don't know that Cassidy is the one to do that. I, I, I don't think they have the right element of players on the team right now. I don't know what necessarily those changes need to be, but with Eichel's sort of instability and in health, and I, I just am a little concerned for Cassidy and the Lightning. I don't. Oh my god! Here I go again. <laughs> Here I go again with the wrong team. Like, why am I doing this Freudian slip stuff? You're fine. I'm a little concerned about the lightning though. Like I am, <laughs> but I'm also a little bit concerned about the golden Knights. Oh man. Wow. I'm just going to stop talking now. Yeah. I, I don't really have too much uh, to touch on about, about Cassidy and, and the Knights at this point. Too Thank much. God you're listening to me. Yeah, too much is in the air. Um, yeah, not not too sure what to what to say there. All right, let's talk about Barry Trotz, who yes. I also love and am a supporter of. He might be going to the well, press. He, inter- he interviewed for multiple different teams, and they were thinking that he might take a coach position for the Winnipeg Jets. That's what they were, but he's been interviewed all across the board. Um, 
However, he did just buy a house in the 12th South area, which is just outside. Well, it's in the Nashville, you know, vicinity. Okay. So in Nashville, obviously very, you know, coached in, in Nashville. Um, and it's always been said that he may come back in some sort of a management position. Hmm. So is this the time where he just bought this house in Nashville, whether or not it's going to just be a little vacation house? What if it, what if that house came up for sale? Well, who knows what the story is about the house or is it now time for him to take more of a management position? Does he not want to be behind the bench? Yeah. Uh, obviously the, the Preds just got new ownership. Um, is this a change? Is this, you know, where the ball starts rolling to where they start, you know, rolling very into the things. Um, do you nothing's think, really come out yet. How do you think, regardless of Barry's status, do you yeah. think new ownership is what that team needs? Uh, no. To be more successful? I don't necessarily think think it needs new ownership um i don't know too much about everything that had had gone down this the new ownership kind of just came in Mm -hmm. i haven't really had time to to read too much on it but it happened and you got to learn from it you got to grow from it whether it's good or bad this is the position that you're in so i think that they have to do better um but they're not a bad team and you got to think about it they were swept by arguably one of the best teams in the NHL right now. Like they're going for the cup. The abs are going right. for the cup. The right. Preds did what they had to do to make it to the playoffs. At least they made it to the playoffs. They didn't make it very they far, did. but I think that they need some management help. Um, I think that there are some things that can be done. Uh, coaching situations it may not be all the coach. Um, I just think that the Preds need to kind of get it a little bit more together. I think they're in some trouble with a couple of contracts uh, mm. and they do need to make some work. I mean, Phil Forsberg, where is he going to go? Is he going to get re-signed this off season? Is he going to test the waters? Is he leaving? Is he what's happening? So I think he's probably going to stay. I mean, his fiance is a country music singer. Mm -hmm. she kind of needs to be in Nashville. I think it'd be kind of weird if it wasn't. (laughs) I think he's probably going to resign. Barry coming in, if he does come in, I think it'll do good things. But again, I think it's a little too, I need to do a little bit more of my research um, before I probably, I just need to probably stop talking because I don't have enough research. There you go. I don't want to talk about this. But we have to because I probably don't talk enough about the Blackhawks. Do I talk too much about the Blackhawks? I don't know. I try not to overdo it, especially here. But and since I only have one team to cheer for as opposed to you, who has a variety and and lots of opinions. But you messaged me this week saying that there are rumors that Debrinket could become an L.A. King. And it made me have like a complete pit in my stomach. And I started seeing these rumors like the last couple of weeks that he, you know, the Blackhawks are like really considering trading him and getting rid of him. And I'm like, I don't understand the re like, what do you, I don't understand this rebuild. You've had this kid for this long training under Patrick Kane to make him your like next big star and now you're going to get rid of him because he's too expensive. Does that mean that they're now going to try to keep Kane and Tays and sign them to another contract for like two or three years? I don't think those boys want to stay there. And then again, more, another rumor about Kane going to Buffalo. And I'm like, he's not going to, Bu- he's not going to Buffalo. I don't remember where the rumor was that they could see, or it was like some hypothetical that Puck Empire did, which is a social media account. Yeah. I don't remember where they had Johnny Tays going, but it was like panic attack, complete emotional meltdown. I was having reading this. I was like, I don't even know these names on the top line. I, this is not the future of the Blackhawks. This is some bullshit intermission nonsense I have to deal with. 
And then I just saw a clip from a, a social media friend from JR from Jeremy Roenick that was like, I love that you're a Blackhawks fan. Yeah, but it was like a cameo that was sent to him and he sent it to me and he was like, it's going to be about another seven years for the Blackhawks. And I'm like, in seven years, I, I'm good. I don't have seven years. Do I have seven <laughs> years? I have to wait for this. Like, I don't know if I'm, I'm like not mentally prepared for the next seven to 10 years for the Blackhawks to have like a contending team. It makes me sad. It just, I'm not, I just, I don't, I'm not happy about any of this. Just, I'm going to have a really, it's going to be a really hard day when Kane and Taze get signed somewhere else for me. Like it's going to be a really hard day and I don't want people blowing up my DMS. Cause like, I already know it's going to be a really hard day and I'm just going to need to like mourn the loss and just cry about it for a little while. You're going to need to set up a PO box so people can send get well soon <laughs> hard for you. <laughs> literally, literally that's what I'm going to need. Or they can just email us at house of hockey podcast at gmail.com. But yeah, I'm going to need that. Like no mean comments. Like, no, I'm going to need some cheering up from this community because it's going to be a tough day. But that day has not come yet. It's coming. It's coming. It's but coming. You, but you need to enjoy the time that you still have with them. That's what I tried to do this yeah. season because I knew that it was, I, I just, I think a lot of stuff's going to happen in the, in the summertime. Yeah. But it is exciting because there are a lot of things that could be happening in the summertime. And who knows if someone is traded that you may not want to see, think about the talent that can be coming to the Blackhawks. That might be a little bit more. Suited. I don't think, I don't think they're going to bring any names in. I really don't. Well, you never know. All right. Well, I'm not, I'm, you can't bring me out of this hole. You know, the only thing that could bring me out of this hole was seeing Top Gun Maverick. Have you seen this movie? No, I have not. Listen, listen to me. I don't know if it's my kind of movie. Breezy. It's everybody's <laughs> kind of movie. It is phenomenal. I did not expect it to be as good of a story as it was, I cried like five times. Oh boy. <laughs> I laughed. I laughed a bunch. I cried. I, I I was happy. I was sad. I was all the things. I was in love with the hunky men on the, on the beach and in no tops playing football. And like, it's an A plus film. Now I liked the first one, the original one wasn't like this is the best movie ever on like a lot of my male friends in my life who are obsessed with that movie and are like that's their religion is Top Gun but I rewatched the first one before we went to the theater just because we wanted to go to the theater to see it because of the scenes and the flying and everything so good so good but I also gave my two guy friends who are obsessed with this film a lot of shit because neither of them warned me that I would be crying seeing this movie. And they both were like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I had tears. I was like, well, how come you didn't tell me? Like oh, I was oh. not emotionally prepared for this, but I highly recommend it. It was so good. Great story. I hot take here. I think it was better than the first one as far as like storyline goes and like really creating a flu more fluid story than the first one. Perfect ending, perfect update to the modern times. Tom Cruise has an age today. I dare say he's better looking than he was in the original film. And that was my highlight. All right. I'm going to well, need you to go see it, please. Okay, right on. <laughs> it's crazy. It's great. You've seen the first one, right? Yeah, I don't remember the last time I've even been to the movies. I, I'm not like a big movie person, unless it's like a scary movie. I know. I understand. Yeah. But it's a good story. I just feel like there aren't yeah. very many, There's like, stories. just good hollywood stories where it's got like all the things 
action. I'm more interested in going and seeing the new Jurassic Park because there's some OG cast in there. And I'm a big Agreed. Jurassic Park fan. So I will. Okay, let's make a deal. I'll well, go see Jurassic Park. You can see it too, but you also have to go see Maverick. Okay. I'll try to make that happen. Just do the double feature. Did you ever do that as a kid? I totally did that. Did like that several often. times. <laughs> yeah. Except now I think they make it a little harder because they like block off the seats. Like you have to pick a seat now, or at least the theater yeah. we go to. Yeah, you have to like pick your seat location because you mm-hmm. have like, yeah. So you just have to be like a little more stealthy and like look online, but right anyway. Also, too, I think that I've noticed the last time I went to the movies, they had like their like their big films. They, they had them like right in the front where they have like the little usher person like checking your tickets. Mm. So like if you were to go, you would have to like you would have to like army crawl behind them. <laughs> like, that'd be really funny actually to see someone do that. I just have the picture yeah. in my head. I think that's um that's what I got. That's what's happening. So I'm feeling very like Florida beachy Top Gun school. Today. I'm feeling very lazy LA California vibes. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. I don't I don't like California vibes. I sh- I should have said <laughs> I'm feeling very much like the need for speed right now. That would have been better. So We'll end on that. You don't even know what that's from, do you? It's from Top Gun. There you go. You did, it was like, pew! Way over my head. Way over my head. Thanks for coming over to our House of Hockey podcast and hanging out with us. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode. And in the meantime, you can follow us on social media. Just look for House of Hockey podcast. We'll be back next week.